Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make a brain dead simple and super cheap backup power supply for your RC plane. I've been talking about this design for a while and just to clear the air right up front, I completely stole this design from Dave. Dave came up with this. He's an electrician, you know, so we, I do get to exercise my electronics muscles with Dave a little bit. But he came up with this design and I told him I was going to steal it and he said, go ahead, go ahead, steal away, teach everyone how to do it. So here we are. I'm going to show you what's going on. And as you can see, I've already got it connected. I don't know if you've caught on to what's going on by looking at the picture but it's already connected. I think rather than explain it in its final state to you, it'll be easier if I tear it all apart and go through it step by step. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, you're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit and kind of play along with what's going on here. But I'm gonna start by showing you that I've got two discrete power systems. On this side, I've got a traditional power system where I've got a flight pack and an ESC, okay? On this side, I've got another battery and a BEC. This is a standalone BEC. Now normally you connect a BEC, what I would normally do is connect a BEC to the power to the power of the flight battery and I use that standalone into my receiver and then I disconnect the red and black leads off of the internal ESC. And the reason for that is because if you get competing voltage levels, like say you're ESC puts out 5 volts and your BEC puts out 6.4 volts, the higher voltage device will try and charge the lower voltage device. And that's a bad thing. All right, on the right hand side, you'll notice this is a three cell battery. And I'm going to connect my BEC, my standalone BEC, to my three cell battery. And then we're just going to take a voltage reading on this real quick to show you what we've got for output. Okay, 5.02 volts out. So that's the rated output of this BEC. But here's the thing, here's the secret sauce in this design. I've soldered in line on the positive lead a Shockey diode. And notice that the silver band faces the output of my power. So power currents flowing this direction, the silver band blocks current from coming back in to that ESC, okay? That's the secret sauce to this whole thing, is that shocky diode. Okay, so this, this should be normal. This, this, should be, this arrangement should be well understood by most of you. You have, a, you have a battery, you can connect a BEC to it and take five volt power and deliver that to your system. All right, so we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna cover this one now. On this side, it's a standard ESC and I'm gonna connect it and we'll take a reading off of it real quick. So here's my and notice this is a four cell battery, right? So you guys know that you, some ESCs, you know, it's three, four, five, six cells, but the output on the BEC should always be the same. So I'm gonna show you on this BEC, we have an output also of 5.01 volts, which is good. That means my diodes will have to, less work to do. Imagine for a second that this was a two cell battery instead of a BEC. So I could connect a two cell battery with the same diode on the output lead and feed that into my receiver as well. The idea is you don't want competing voltages to go back into the opposing source and that's what the diodes prevent. We've established that I've got five volts on this one, five volts on this one, they're discrete power sources. I've got diodes in line on the outputs of both of my BECs. So here's my output on my standard BEC and here's my output on my discrete BEC. Now what I'm gonna do is connect these to this little this is a dual receiver controller, uh, but I, I'm using this because I thought this would be the most visible demonstration I could do for you. All right, so I've connected a test lead to this dual receiver controller, and the whole point of using this is to show you that I've got a common electrical rail. That's, that's why I'm using this particular device. So I've got test leads connected to my voltmeter. I've got positive and negative connected to my meter running over here. Now I'm going to connect the first BEC. So I've got battery 
into the ESC, and then off the ESC, this is the ESC lead. This is what you'd normally plug into your receiver. And watch the voltmeter when I plug this in. It's going to jump up to 5 volts, or just under 5 volts. Okay, 4.85 volts. So a little bit of voltage loss when we plug that in. Now we're going to take this other BEC that's also got a shocky diode. We'll take a measurement on this guy. And 5.02, okay? Plug this back into our test leads. And I'm going to connect this now to our pseudo receiver on an adjacent port. Okay, the first thing you'll notice is we don't have any sparks. Before I go any further, I want to be clear about what this arrangement does. If your ESC fails, your motor goes. You, you don't, there's no help here for that, right? This is not a dual ESC setup. But what will happen if your ESC completely fails and you lose power to your receiver, now keep in mind, look, watch the voltage. Let's say that the ESC completely fails and we disconnect it from our receiver. Look at this ESC is gone. It's out of the picture. We still have power to our receiver, okay? Now I'm going to plug this back in. And you notice no sparks when I do that. And I'm going to disconnect our backup BEC. So if this one fails, notice we still have power to our receiver. So the reason that this all works is because we're using diodes to prevent backflow of current back into the the alternate power supply or the alternative power supply. That's why this works. Okay, so let's recap real quick. I haven't done any testing with a very wide voltage gap, like say five to 10 volts. So you, if you wanna do something like that, do it at your own risk or, or experiment on the bench first. What I can say is that you, if you use two alternate power supplies, like two BECs that are within a, about a volt of each other, this is gonna work. So we're feeding current into the receiver from two different sources. We've got our standard BEC here, and we've got our backup BEC over here. And they're both going into the receiver, and we can disconnect either one. There's a disconnection from our flight pack that's now out of the picture. And if we plug that back in, and then we lose our backup BEC, that's not out of the picture. We've always maintained our voltage to the receiver. That is the brain dead simple, super cheap electric backup power system for RC planes. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this content and I hope you can find a use for it in your model airplanes or quads or whatever, it, whatever else it is that you fly. And if you did enjoy this content, you know a full 75% of my views come from people who don't subscribe. So you guys are visiting, you're coming back. I'd appreciate the subscription because it helps my videos get placement. So I'm doing this work to put material out there for the community. You can give back a little bit just by hitting that subscribe button and I would appreciate it. For you guys that have been subscribers for a while, you know I appreciate you. Keep the comments coming, keep talking, keep sharing, keep the thumbs up, thumbs down and do all the things you do. Don't forget to hit my t-shirt store and my Amazon affiliate links if you need some consumable RC gear. That's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy.